Hi everyone. A very good morning. So we started the journey of pre-neat with cell biology. We moved on to biochemistry and later on we also tackled part of your plant physiology. I, I know that three chapters still remain. Namely, they are transport in plants, mineral nutrition and plant growth and development. However, apart from those topics, another segment of your syllabus, which is the human physiology, has been untouched till now. Human physiology also carries a lot of marks. So, it is only sensible to start with human physiology as well. The other, cha other chapters we shall cover later on, okay? Nothing will be left out. Now, in human physiology, the system that normally confuses students or what I found, they find it a little difficult to grasp, is the control and coordination system. Now, there are two major systems or organ systems which are included in this. The first one being nervous system and the second one being the endocrine system. So, from today, we will start with the nervous system or neural control and coordination. Fine. Now, before we can go ahead, I hope you all know the meaning of control. Okay, It is a pretty common term that you use in English language to control something, Okay, to have control over something. Now, what is meant by coordination? Let us begin with that term. So, coordination is a process through which two or more organs interact. Now, here we are talking about coordination in context of biology. So, we are talking about two or more organs. Clear? So, here the two or more organs, they are interacting with each other. Just like how you interact with your classmates. Right? So, here the organs, they interact with each other and they complement the functions of one another. Okay? Com to complement is to help. Okay? To add on to something. So, um, there are these two organs, then they will be complementing each other's function. Okay? For example, let us say you are doing some physical exercise. You have gone out for a walk or let us say you are uh, skipping a rope or doing hula hoop, or in a gym, working out. So basically you are doing some exercise. Okay. Now what happens when you do exercise? There is increased muscular activity. You are using all of your muscles. Right. Now when the, there is increased muscular activity, there is also increase in energy demand. Okay. Your body is demanding or it requires more and more energy. Now where do we get this energy from? easy we just understood the whole pathways uh, in this previous chapter right which was nothing but respiration so this energy demand is met by increasing the rate of respiration so now your body it will increase the rate of respiration clear yeah? now as the rate of respiration increases the oxygen supply should also increase Right? Because we have seen that in aerobic respiration, we require oxygen as the terminal electron acceptor. So, along with increase in energy production, you require increased oxygen also. How do you get increased oxygen supply? So, your breathing, your breathing rate, okay, it increases. So, you inhale and exhale uh, much more frequently. Now, along with breathing, okay, just uh, breathing will not help. Why? Because now let us say your blood has enough oxygen. Okay, It is saturated with oxygen. So along with uh, increased rate of respiration and increased rate of breathing, your heart rate and blood, sh blood flow should also increase. Right? Only if your heart rate increases, more and more blood will flow through your body and as the blood flows through your body, it will be able to deliver the oxygen. Clear? And hence, this whole cycle gets completed. That you are able to perform this physical exercise in the best manner possible. Clear? Now, let us say you are just uh, sitting on your chair, on your table and uh, listening to this lecture. Right? 
looking at the pictures so you are at rest fine when you are at rest that is you are not doing any physical uh, exercise okay there is less muscular activity you are just sitting there and listening to this lecture so you are not moving your hand you are not moving your legs so there is reduced muscular activity in which case there is reduced energy demand whenever you are at rest there is uh, no such demand for more and more energy because there is reduced energy demand there is also reduced rate of respiration okay your body does not require energy so the rate of respiration should not be higher your breathing rate is also normal okay and so your heart rate and blood flow is also normal okay it is reduced it is normal so both of these things what do you see in both of these examples you see that the muscular system the respiratory system and the cardiovascular system okay they are in perfect harmony with each other they are very well complementing each other's functions okay just like friends they are helping each other out clear so muscular system of course involves your voluntary muscles voluntary matlab the muscles which are under your control clear so that includes your muscular system or skeletal system then respiratory system is your lungs okay lungs they breathe in the breathe, breathe out so the breathing function is performed by lungs and cardiovascular now from the name itself you can come to know cardio means your heart and vascular means your blood vessels so together along with your heart and blood vessel the whole system is known as cardiovascular system so all three of these systems are um, working in perfect harmony and who is controlling or who is uh, checking that all three of them work together the answer is your nervous system okay as well as your endocrine system but here we focus on your nervous system so it is like a team manager okay the team manager he or she is overlooking the team and the team is working in perfect synchrony now that you have understood the term control and coordination system okay you know the word control you know the word coordination so um as we as i mentioned earlier there are two systems which come under this title control and coordination system the first one being nervous system and the second one being endocrine system nervous system is what it is like wires okay as you can see here there are a lot of wires coming out from one place uh, then getting folded over and uh, getting connected to the other place okay from left to right so it is basically an organized network of point to point connections okay just like your landline phones if you know your landline phones they are connected from point to point right there is a wire which connects the phone to the uh, let us say network tower okay or the office so here also in nervous system there is point to point connections however in case of endocrine system the messages are delivered or relayed relayed meaning deliver have you ever seen the relay race right how you pass the baton a uh, baton is that small rod that you pass during the relay race right so that is why this uh, term is used message is relayed through chemicals known as hormones so in case of nervous system there are wires and in case of endocrine system you can um, the analogy you can think of is like a post okay uh, let us say you have written a letter or some post you post it okay you go and give it to the post office the post office will deliver it to the uh, person's house right so this is what happens in case of hormones okay hormones are nothing they are chemicals they are messenger chemicals clear so nervous system is fast acting let us say you have this landline telephone and you want to call somebody you just dial the numbers and then the call directly connects right the other person just picks up in real time that is within 30 seconds or as soon as the phone can start ringing the other person will be able to pick it up and talk to you so same way nervous system is very fast acting just think about it um it takes milliseconds okay you uh, let us say i tell you to blink your eyes 
how long did it take your brain just sensed this message this uh, what you can say order okay and it directly blinked so that is how fast it can act okay so nervous system is normally fast acting however the endocrine system is comparatively slow it takes some time okay you post your letter and let us say it takes about 5 days for the letter to reach mumbai okay yeah? so it is comparatively slow however if you call a person from here to mumbai then the answer the person can answer within 30 seconds fine so this is the difference between the two systems one is fast acting you get immediate results okay just like that instantaneous results however in endocrine system you get slow results okay you get slower uh, message delivered we go ahead with neural system now in your textbook it is mentioned as neural system i however will always call it nervous system okay so do not get confused it is one and the same um it is just that when you go okay for your higher studies you will see that it is um normally referred to as nervous system nobody calls it neural system these days clear so uh, just by just out of habit okay i will normally call it nervous system it is one and the same okay so your nervous system it is composed of highly specialized cells called neurons here what you are seeing is a um, picture okay it is a microscopic picture taken of your neuron and this neuron it was uh, stained with fluorescent dyes okay that is why you can see the green colored processes and the blue colored cell fine so these uh, this cell here is a neuron your nervous system is made up of these highly specialized cells the neurons what is their function okay how are they special so these neurons they can detect okay that let us say they can detect smell okay you are able to smell you are able to see you are able to taste you are able to feel pressure temperature all of this is detected by your neurons so neurons they can detect they can receive okay uh, so there are uh, different neurons who just receive this message so they some neurons they can detect some can receive and some neurons are specifically for transmission okay they what function do they do they do the function of forwarding the message just like some of your relatives might be doing on let us say whatsapp okay so just think of them that is what neurons do they detect the uh, message they receive the message or they transmit the message here the messages are known as signals so from now on i will be referring to them as signals only okay in invertebrates invertebrates are the um what you can say animals okay who do not have vertebral column vertebral column is the uh, backbone that you see in our case okay your spinal cord and around the spinal cord there is a vertebral column which is made up of different bones right so invertebrates are the ones who do not have vertebral column and vertebrates are the animals who have vertebral column so in invertebrates as well as in invertebrates the type of neural organization is different so the nervous system is a little different from uh, different phylum or different class to class clear now i know you still have to study animal kingdom but um, from whatever you know let us just discuss very basic so you start seeing nervous system for the first time in a nidarian nidaria is also known as coelentrata okay it comes after porifera and these are simple organism it includes jellyfish it includes hydra okay so let us see this is hydra okay this is arrow ha huh? so this here is a hydra and in hydra the first time you see nervous system and this nervous system is like a net okay these are uh, single neurons and these neurons are arranged in form of a net so it is known as nerve net then again uh, when we talk about some different phylum now let us say echinoderm i hope you know echino means spiny okay uh, so spiny and derm means skin wherever you hear the term d e r m derm it means skin 
fine. So echinoderm means spiny skinned. So the example uh, taken here is of a starfish. So in a starfish, you see a nerve ring and radial nerves surrounding it. Okay, one for each arm. Then in flatworm, uh, here the example is of planaria. So in flatworm, you see ladder shaped uh, nervous system. Then in case of an annelid, annelid example is your earthworm, leeches, neres, right? So here uh, a leech is shown and in a leech you can see a nerve cord, which is nothing but like our spinal cord, right? So they have a nerve cord and uh, in between you see some swollen regions which are known as ganglion, right? So ganglia, plural, ganglion, singular and the ventral nerve cord. Similarly, you can see different types of nervous system in all different uh, organisms, okay, in all different animals. The ones we should focus on are hydra because that, that is the first time where we see a nervous system. Then insects because you will have to study some basic in cockroach, though it is not in syllabus, but sometimes they do ask questions about earthworm, cockroach and frog. and these questions are normally related to your animal kingdom, okay? Animal classification. So uh, you cannot say that is out of out of syllabus, okay? So uh, we shall discuss very briefly uh, about these three organisms as well. But right now, just remember, in arthropod or in insect, uh, for example, here you have the first time you see a sort of brain, okay? A small brain is being formed. It is also a group of ganglions, okay, it is very small in size, but here is the first time that you see a brain. And then finally, you have salamander. Salamander is like your uh, lizard, okay. An example of lizard, it is actually, uh, it, uh, it comes in the tetrapoda class, okay, tetrapoda class. So, uh, salamander, you will be able to see a sort of good enough brain, okay, just like ours. And they have spinal cord just like us and also some peripheral nervous system. So now that we have discussed uh, the nervous system in general, what it is, what it is made up of, let us talk about neural tissue. What is neural tissue or nervous tissue, right? So if you take, uh, let us say, a piece of your brain, what do you expect to find? That is what will be included in the neural tissue. Whenever we study tissue, this study of tissues is also known as histology. I'm just giving you a, a quick revision statement that study of tissues is known as histology, like how study of cells is known as cytology. So if we talk about neural histology or nervous tissue, it is made up of neurons, okay, which are the specialized cells. And it is made up of neuroglia, sometimes referred to as glia only, or glial cells. All three of these are the terms for the same type of cells. Okay. So if you take a piece of your uh, nervous tissue, you will find neurons and you will find some accessory. Accessory meaning some extra cells, which are known as neuroglia, glia or glial cells. You can see here, this is a microscopic picture of your neural tissue. The main cell that you're able to see here is your neuron and the small black dots that you see surrounding it are actually the nucleus, okay, of these neuroglial cells. Neuron is a special type of cell, okay, as we have already discussed. Why? Because it is able to detect, it is able to uh, receive and transmit signals. Apart from that, it is always stuck in the G0 phase. I want you to go back and revise your cell cycle. If you remember G0, very good uh, and claps for you. So G0 phase, okay? So this neuron, it is always fixed in this G0 phase. It will never divide, clear? Yeah? So neurons and neuroglial cells. Talking about neuron, it is made up of two main parts. The big part that you see here, okay, this circular or spherical type of structure that you see, 
is known as cell body in some books it is also referred to as cyton or soma all of these are names of the same thing okay this big spherical thing that you see which is your cell body cyton or soma apart from that the cell is also made up of cell processes which are see here the process is not like a uh, haber's process wala process okay it is more like uh, appendages like how your hands and legs are also called appendage same way cell processes or uh, which are referred to as neurites so what are these cell processes they are nothing but they are extension of your plasma membrane so as you can see here this is your neuron okay the neuron cell body the cell body has this cell membrane the cell membrane is extending outwards okay it is forming the cylindrical structures so these here are called your uh, cell processes or cell neurites they are of two types again there are dendrites and there are exon we shall study uh, all the parts of neuron in coming slide so let us discuss neuron which is the structural and the functional unit of nervous system clear we shall begin from the top and go up till the bottom that is how we will study the structure this is a typical neuron cell okay uh, when you look at a neuron this is how you will find it starting from the top we will begin with the first uh, neurites which are called dendrites okay dendrites literally if you want to know the translation it means branches because as you can see it looks like branches right so these are short fiber uh, short branched fibers that project out of the cell body here this middle portion okay this main portion is called your cell body and from the cell body you can see the plasma membrane is moving out and it is forming these branched structures these are called dendrites these fibers they transmit impulse towards the cell body so what is their function this was first we talked about their structure now we are talking about their function they act as antenna if you remember in the old televisions you used to have those antennas okay on the rooftops so just like those antennas these dendrites they act as antenna for your neuron okay what will they do they will receive the signals after receiving the signal they will pass on the signal to your cell body okay so these fibers they transmit the impulses impulses and signals are one and the same we shall see nerve impulse conduction later on during this chapter only so just remember signals are impulses okay in case of neurons okay so they transmit the signals or they transmit this uh, impulses toward the cell body okay from outside or from uh, peripheral region periphery is your surrounding from the surrounding they pass on the message to your cell body so whenever this type of uh, movement is seen it is called centripetal just like uh, you, what you have or you must have read in physics okay like centripetal force and centrifugal force centripetal is the force towards you and centrifugal is away from you so same way here because the impulses are being transmitted towards the cell body it is also sometimes referred to as centripetal the next part the main part that you can see here with the nucleus is your cell body cell body or soma contains cytoplasm it has your nucleus it lacks centrioles or centrosome okay why does it lack centriole or centrosome because it can never divide okay this neurons they will never divide so normally they, you do not find a lot of centrioles or centrosomes in the cell body so they lack that but their cytoplasm as you can see in this diagram can you see it has small granules okay these small dots that you are able to see are actually called nissels granules nissels granules are named after the scientist who found out these granules okay um, so uh, here are the nissels granules now uh, what are these nissels granules so they are nothing but they are small small fragments of your rough endoplasmic reticulum clear 
so they are rough endoplasmic reticulum fragments they are small small portions of your rough endoplasmic reticulum which means they have a lot of ribosomes and what does ribosomes or what does your rough endoplasmic reticulum do it does the function of synthesizing proteins and we shall see later on in this chapter that proteins are very 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 essential for functioning of neurons so because the neuron has a lot of requir requirement of protein synthesis you find uh, an increased number of such rer granules or nissels granules uh, one more thing which i forgot nissels granules you can stain it with nissels stain okay so that is why uh, also they are known as nissels granules they are present in the dendrites too in the starting of the dendrites also you can see that these nissels granules are present fine moving ahead you have the next part okay we have tackled dendrites we have seen new uh, cell body let us talk about the second type of new rights or cell processes which is known as exon exon is this long cylindrical structure okay it is just an extension of your plasma membrane and the cytoplasm it forms the cylindrical structure and that is known as exon where the exon is connected to cell body this part okay this uh, triangular part here which is not labeled it is known as exon hillock from exon hillock the signals will be passed down okay so the exons they transmit nerve impulses away from the cell body whatever the signal has come to the main center or your cell body it will be transmitted through these exons away from the cell body so this is also known as centrifugal clear where is it transmitted it is transmitted to a synapse we shall see the synapses soon enough so it is um, um uh, transmitted away from your cell body towards the synapse the synapse can be uh, with uh, neuron neuron or neuron and muscle so uh, there can be a normal synapse or to a neuromuscular junction uh, we will see the differences um, after one more slide okay so i hope this much is clear exon it starts from exon hillock and it ends in these bulb like structures which are known as synaptic knobs okay it branches off like this and you have these small bulb like structures which are called synaptic knobs or exon terminals terminal as you may have already known it means the end so the end of the neuron or end of exon is known as exon terminal and the exon terminal has a structure a swollen structure known as synaptic knob it looks like a bulb clear yeah? now talking about something that you see stuck on these exon okay this exon is this yellow colored structure on that yellow colored structure also you are able to see other things so what are those things these are called schwann cells okay schwann after the name of the scientist clear so as you can see this is the schwann cell nucleus and this is its plasma membrane so uh, attached to the exon are the schwann cells they are type of glial cells okay glial cells as i had discussed they are the supporting cells okay and they form a myelin sheath around the exon now uh, this here the structure formed here is your myelin sheath what does it look like if you take a cross section let us say we took a cross section here and you saw it from above then it will look like this this here is your exon the orange or the yellow colored part okay so your exon and surrounding the exon you have this nucleus of schwann cell can you see this is the nucleus here and in the cross section this is the nucleus now the schwann cell also has a plasma membrane right as seen here so this is the plasma membrane and this plasma membrane will extend think of it like a cello tape roll okay if you um pick up the end of the cello tape and you pull it it will form this very thin uh, tape like structure right a very tape uh, thin tape will come out so now you are um, what you can say uh, uh, circling this exon with such sort of cello tape okay so here the, uh, in this case in our example the cello tape is nothing but the myelin sheath okay 
this myelin sheath again is formed by the plasma membrane. Clear? So this is the Schwann cell, the Schwann cell's plasma membrane. These plasma membranes are coming together, okay? And very little cytoplasm is left in between. Now this, just like a cellotape, it will go round and round around the exon and this is what is known as myelin sheath, okay? If you see, it is just the extended plasma membrane of your Schwann cell. Are you able to understand? Okay, the myelin sheath is made up of lipids and acts as an electrical insulator. You must have studied in uh, physics also, there are different types of insulators. There can be heat insulator, okay, or there can be electrical insulator, just like your wires, which do not allow electricity to come out, okay, they do not allow electricity to go out of the wire. So similarly here in case of exons, there will be electrical transmission. So to make sure that this transmission, okay, this electrical signal, it does not go outside this lipid, it acts as electrical insulator. Now if you want to know what exactly, which all lipids are present, then they are phospholipids because it is nothing but your plasma membrane. So of course there will be phospholipids. Then there are proteins also some. Um, then there is glycolipids. These are special type of complex lipids which have carbohydrate attached to them. Then there is something known as sphingomyelin, okay, in which the alcohol is sphingosine, and along with this sphingosine, the fatty acid is esterified. So sphingomyelin, as well as cholesterol, it has the highest amount of cholesterol. So not all cholesterol is bad for you. You should have enough amount of cholesterol in your diet because it is important for your brain to function properly. Clear? So this myelin sheath is nothing. It is a layer. It has layers of fats or lipids around the exon. It acts as an electrical insulator. Now you can see that there are some gaps between these myelin sheaths. Okay, there is one cell, one Schwann cell here, and the other Schwann cell here. Between the two Schwann cells, the exon, okay, it is free for some time. It does not have any myelin sheath. These regions are known as nodes, okay, and they are known as node of Ranvier. It's not a Ranvier. <laughs> Remember this, it is Ranvier, right? So these are known as nodes of Ranvier. I hope the structure of your neuron is very clear from now. Now, coming back to the um, what, what we had discussed before, the synapse. So, what is the synapse? You can see these, this is the exon. The exon is finally getting branched. And at the end of the branch, there is this knob-like structure. Okay, knob is like door knob-like structure or bulb-like structure. It is known as synap uh, synaptic bulb. Okay, now this particular region is uh, zoomed in here. So this here is the uh, exon terminal. Okay, exon terminal which has a synaptic bulb. And uh, beneath it is the dendrite of the next neuron. Okay. Uh, so just think about holding hands with your um, friends, let us say. So here is your hand and with your hand is attached or uh, you have in your hand your friend's hand. Okay. So hand in hand. Same way. Here you have exon terminal and here you have dendrite of the next neuron clear so what will happen there will be transmission of the uh, signals from one neuron to another through this space there is some space between these two and this space is known as synapse we shall study this in detail later on but right now i just wanted to show you that the exon terminal can be ending on the next neuron or it can be ending on a muscle. So here you can see a muscle fiber, okay? One muscle cell is known as muscle fiber. So this is the muscle fiber nucleus and these are the neuro, uh, sorry, myofibrils, okay? So this here are the myofibrils, actin, myosin, filaments, all of those. And if you notice carefully, this is the exon, 
exon is ending okay in these exon terminals which are nothing but your synaptic bulbs here is a zoomed version of the synaptic bulb and you can see how it is forming a synapse or neuromuscular junction junction is where two systems are meeting so here what two systems are meeting the nervous system and the muscular system are meeting so it is known as neuromuscular junction clear we shall discuss this also later on during the chapter but for now i just wanted you to know that the exons can have ends or terminals uh, forming synapse with another neuron or they can be forming a synapse okay or a junction with another system like your muscular system so uh, just to understand this uh, let us say you have decided to snap your fingers like this so this um, signal okay it was transmitted from your brain from the nervous system to your muscular system right your muscles decided that you have to snap your fingers so this is why this neuromuscular junction is important now classification of neurons very quickly the neurons are classified uh, in two ways okay the first way is based on number of cell processes or based on number of neurites the first one or a typical neuron is multipolar neuron multipolar neuron uh, as shown here has a single exon okay and has two or more dendrites coming out of its cell body so location of such type of multipolar neurons is in cerebral cortex when we shall study the brain this upper portion okay which you can see here in the cross section is known as your cerebral cortex clear so when you look at the neurons from this region of your brain they will be multipolar the second type of neurons are bipolar neurons so here you can see bipolar neurons bi means two it has two poles here you can see from the cell body one neuron uh, sorry one neurite or one dendrite coming out and from the bottom one exon coming out such type of neurons bipolar neurons are found in the retina of eye okay in the end of the chapter we shall also be uh, looking at some sensory organs like eye ear right so in eye when you take a cross section of retina you see these bipolar neurons can you see the green colored ones are your bipolar neurons okay so they are found in your retina and then finally there are something known as unipolar neurons unipolar neurons have only one exon so this here is the cell body from the cell body only one exon is coming out but that one exon is branched okay so branching uh, of that one single exon it will give you dendrites on one side and the exon terminals on the other side this type of unipolar neurons are seen only in the embryonic stage meaning only during development of the fetus or of the baby they are not usually seen in adult humans the second type of classification of neurons is based on myelination myelination we just saw what is myelin sheath okay so based on that term myelin sheath sheath again is like a blanket okay um, so myelin sheath if it is present then they are called myelinated okay so this myelin sheath is present so this here diagram the first diagram is showing a myelinated exon so this here blue colored one is your exon and the pink colored one is your myelin sheath in between two myelin sheaths there is presence of road, node of ranvier this type of neurons are found in spinal and cranial nerves okay and then the second type of neurons are unmyelinated ones okay they do not have exon Uh, which are myelinated there is no myelination on the exons clear so example or location of such type of unmyelinated neurons are in your autonomous and somatic nervous system in the next class we shall be studying all these uh, nervous systems okay types or classification of the whole nervous system so till that time just note it down and we shall discuss it next time um ending the today's lecture we will be discussing the types of neuroglia or glial cells 
remember in the table we saw that if you take a nervous tissue it is made up of neurons and the supporting cells which are called neuroglia or glial cells so let us very quickly discuss the types of neuroglia there are four different types of cells found in your central nervous system central nervous system means your brain and your spinal cord so there are four main types of supporting cells or neuroglial cells found in your brain and your spinal cord the first type is called astrocyte wherever you hear the word ester or astro okay starting with a so this astro means star and can you see it looks like a star okay right? so this here is an astrocyte what does it do it forms a, a layer around the blood capillaries okay this is your blood capillary so it is forming a blanket or it is forming a covering around your blood capillary so this is the reason why your brain okay it is protected from a lot of toxic substances chemicals that can damage your brains are not allowed to enter your brain okay they are not allowed to come closer to your neuron because of presence of this astrocyte and what is this blanket known as it is known as blood brain barrier okay it is causing this it is creating this blood brain barrier so that a lot of harmful products do not reach your neurons then you have microglial cells which look like this microglial cells are the macrophages of your nervous system what will they do they will take care of dead cells okay if uh, some neurons have died then those neurons will be eaten up by the microglial cell if there is any infection then that infection will be taken care of by these microglial cells the third type of cells are called ependymal cells ependymal cells they secrete the fluid found in your brain okay surrounding your brain it is a shock absorber fluid okay which is known as cerebrospinal fluid csf so who is secreting the csf ependymal cells are secreting this csf cerebrospinal fluid and finally the fourth type of neuroglia found in your central nervous system is oligodendrocyte oligodendrocyte are schwann cells for your central nervous system okay what are, what are they doing they are uh, creating myelin sheath around the exons okay they provide this myelin sheath around the exon of neurons finally in your peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system are all the nerves which uh, uh, excluding your brain and your spinal cord okay the nerves which start from your brain and go towards your hands or uh, which start from your uh, spinal cord and go towards your legs so all of these are known as nerves okay and they are, are uh, considered as peripheral nervous system so in peripheral nervous system there are only two types of cells found the first one shown here are the schwann cells and schwann cells we just saw saw that their function is to form these myelin sheets okay so in your peripheral nervous system myelin sheet will be formed by schwann cell in your central nervous system the process is done by your oligodendrocyte then there are the second type of cells known as satellite cell what is the function of satellite cell they form such sort of layer okay around your uh, cell body okay so this is your cell body of your neuron and surrounding the neuron you find such kind of satellite cells they make sure that the neuron gets enough oxygen as well as in as well as enough nutrition okay so that is their function so here we end today's lecture i hope it was um informative for you and you had fun understanding some basic concepts of nervous system in the next class we will begin with the next section okay and uh, till then i hope you start reading up again okay referring to your nervous system uh, in your textbook yeah so see you next time